Welcome aboard. In the direction of travel, doors open on the left. Soliciting and gambling. Get down, Lamar. Get down, Lamar. Hi, and welcome to the L Podcast. Thank you for tuning in again. Please don't forget, we're dropping episodes every Wednesday by 3 p.m. I just want to thank everybody so much who's just keeping up with our page. Make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube. It's just going to get better and better each time. Make sure you go on our Instagram at The L Podcast. Make sure you go on our Facebook at The L Podcast in the number three. So... I want to introduce my co-host. I, I need to keep doing that at the beginning of the show because y'all need to know who they is. These are important people. So I have my co-host Toxic T, and I have my co-host Rita, and I'm your host Laniqua. So before we get into the show, how y'all doing today? Why y'all look over here at me? Like I just, I just knew I you was gonna ask. go first. <laughs> I, was just, I just knew you was gonna go first. That's and all. This is an ongoing thing. Okay, uh, I feel good today. Like I woke up full of. Oh, first of all, I'm not even feeling like that. I woke up hungover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was drinking Tremaine. You know, Casamigo brother. Tremaine. Yeah, I'm never running up on that shit again. Excuse me, that stuff again. But yeah, I woke up after the hangover part passed. I was, I was feeling great, ready to drink again. <laughs> yeah, see, I got a, I got a, um, a fifth of Hennessy in my car, and I shows in my, I show was driving like I need a shot. I'm like, no, you gotta practice being professional, Monique. I you feel like that was selfish. And do what you, you said that, like was that was selfish. selfish. Yeah, I feel like you should have bought. But it's been for enough forever. It's been enough forever. I don't even know if it tastes the same. You know, the girls like to drink. First of all, if something changed the the, the can't let the change the taste of Hennessy, not heat, <laughs> not, <fucking> up, <laughs> not the cold, what? <laughs> not okay, the peel drop. Something. No, I'm just playing. Well, y'all drink for me because I haven't drank yet. So no, yeah, not yet. But I feel good today. A little better, you know. It's a good day. It's gonna be a better day. But yeah. What's gonna be your first drink? Probably. Don't say no long island. Yeah, I was so just strong. I was just gonna say Long Island. No, that's crazy because you know I love Long Island. It's top shelf, baby. It's top shelf. Top bro, I'm gonna give, I'm uh, gonna give you a Casamigo shirt. Yeah, I would say like Casamigos or Duce. One of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Duce smooth. Yeah. yeah the star one of those. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't been, I ain't drinking like over a month though. It's been Ooh. almost two months now, actually. Wow. Still never happy. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, it is, I guess. <laughs> Feeling good over here. You're jealous. <laughs> you can do it, too. Shit. You can do it, too. We can all you do it. Right. Y'all want to go on the fast? Ramadan is coming up. A liquor fast. I can I do that, period. Yeah, I don't drink that. No, no, if we're talking about food, that's different. What about weed? That's different. <laughs> 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 we can do the liquor, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, all right, so... We're gonna start back doing icebreakers. I think that's good so the audience can get to know the host and the co-host. So we're gonna start back doing icebreakers. So we got two icebreakers for today. So the icebreaker is your best Chicago Juke era experience. You know I was nine times out of the 10 with you. You but know that. Who I re- I, you let me know see. I was with you nine times out of 10. I think it's either between a rink or a Markham. That, that, it was definitely for sure the rink. Markham was cool. It, took, it was too far. Like you yeah, had to have your parents take you to Markham. But that's when yeah. I got my first juke. That's when I got your sister was like, yeah. "Come on, Rizba." No, I think it was. <laughs> I think it was Markham for me too, though. Juke. But I'm saying the one that was busting was the rink. But the, my first experience was Markham as well. Yeah, I think we had one together. That was y'all first time going yeah, to Markham too? Yeah, we had never went to Markham before that. We heard about Markham from you. Really? You yeah, know, like, what is Markham? Like, and what? I stayed all the way in the suburbs. That's and a mess. I didn't know these things. <laughs> I was just say, I, we went, I went to the skating rink up in Lombard. That was okay, I heard, I heard in Lombard. Lombard, Lombard yeah, I heard of that skating rink. Yeah, Lombard that's where we was always at. It was yeah. busted. We had to drive, yeah, it was definitely. Y'all busted. used to have juke parties out there in Lombard yeah, too? Yes, they so they had stopped the skating party for y'all to juke like this? <laughs> okay, Lombard. Dang, that yeah. was so wrong. Oh my god, that was like 
over 10 years ago. I had to really think about that. Like, well, that was a long well time over ago. 10 years ago. I was like, yeah, 13, 14, yeah. Wow, good times, good times. I'm trying to see. They used to always shoot up. So eight what our kids gonna do? Huh? What our kids gonna do? When I don't they know. Get, uh, they at work to juke. My kids going to work. I don't know where they finna juke at. They finna at Girl, work. You know they gonna have juke on the they weekend. They gonna be at work. You want some money? <laughs> you know they gonna juke on the weekend. <laughs> and we work on the weekends too. Shoot. <laughs> I'm good bad. They gonna be trying to have a YouTube yeah. party. That's gonna be the new a thing. virtual YouTube, party. Let's YouTube do it. Party. Ooh, you know what? Martin Luther King skating rink used to be busting. I never made it to when they was juking when the Pope was coming up there and stuff. I never made it. I was with you that day too, up there. I might say it ain't like that no more. You just didn't invite me everywhere and I used to come or something. I just took my kids there. Was like, I didn't know nothing about nothing. You did. You said what? Well, we, I, we went with the kids a couple months ago, like January. It was nice. It was just very chill, family oriented. Yeah, we should nah, go skating. These kids going to yeah. miss out so much. We should so go skating, much. though. No, we should seriously. Yeah, we should. Yeah. That would be a good I need to find skate. I want to learn how to do the little moves them girls be doing. But Lexi, she said she don't know how to skate. She don't want to skate. She better learn. <laughs> she better get on the road. I just like probably stopped skating. Up. I was in I was in Texas skating last year, just roaming through the safe Texas. But it ain't never too late to learn skating. how to skate. It was fun. Oh, people out there that don't. No, I'm sorry. For all the people that aren't kids that don't no, know how to skate, they skate, up they too skate late. more than us. Who the older people? Yes. Yeah, girl, they be having their custom made skates. Playing that James Brown and stuff. stuff. <laughs> I shall be practicing my little uh, tricks out there. Like, yeah, my let husband gonna have a skate still thing. Got it. Okay, we go. <laughs> I'm spinning around backwards. Uh, uh-uh, I'm practicing my tricks. <laughs> Period. I used okay. To talk to that shit. <laughs> okay. So then the next one is okay. This is the lyric game. Okay. And I think we did this before, but this gonna be our first time on YouTube doing this. So the lyric game is you think of one word and the other two hosts have to rap. Or sing a song to that word. So let's get y'all five seconds to think of a word up in the head. We're gonna go from like this and then like that. Okay. So one, two, three, four, four and a half, five. Okay. What's a word for both of us? Um, cake. I will that. Cake, cake. That's what I just want to think of, too. I'm trying to get y'all like it. That was uh, easy. Do another one. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that's what I was going to think of, too. Cake, cake. Yeah, that eating my birthday. Cake, um, cake. Okay. I'm saying my word. Y'all go next. Okay. Um. Um. Gun. I almost got a gun. <laughs> Too many blockies. I got the drugs. She got the what? That's not good. I said gun. I said gun. Not blockies. Yeah, this lick. Like this. I like that song too, Sheree. <laughs> um, I just want to sing that song real quick. Y'all cheated. Oh uh, wait, wait, wait. What? What's that song? Trapped in the closet. Wait, now he said Beretta. He ain't said gun. Fun gun. gun. Oh, it almost got that's that's the most like come on. What what show that was that for? Y'all ain't never seen some real like it was like what a real Kodak Black just say my name Kodak Black but when you see me I'm white. <laughs> and I'm like but your said, white wife. No, he said something. He was like I bring the sharpest gun to. I mean I bring the sharpest knife to the, the gun, gun fight. fight. <laughs> I thought you were like that's my song. That's okay. my song. That's okay. it. All right, my turn. Yeah, I'm gonna go with t-shirt. For five hundred. T-shirt in my panties on. Oh, I, was the, I was thinking you was the one. T-shirt in my yeah, panties t-shirt, on. T-shirt. <laughs> I know a lot of t-shirt songs. I just thought of another one. I want to give you one like, so bad. Wait, wait, I'm don't need, do it. I need to phone a friend because I don't know why I can't <laughs> get a t-shirt. Phone a friend. So. Tell me, I got one for you. <laughs> t-shirt, t-shirt. I feel like it's a little boosty song. Like it's a boosty lyric. I should I'm be thinking. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what I'm thinking of. Who song is that? And say G M C boys. No, no, the franchise. Oh, the franchise. G M C boys. Who is that? G M C boys. Uh, now I know you tired of your nigga. Um, you no, know. that's them getaway boys. Oh my God. Well, no, G M C boys. She say she want a thug, cause her man ain't be there. That ain't pretty. We not from Chicago. No, that's G M C boys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoever y'all is, that's the job. What I was thinking was the Destiny Child song. I sleep in your t-shirt, wake up in yeah. your t-shirt, I smell the same. Yeah. 
I blanked on that. I'm still over here thinking of the t shirt song. I'm being the car driving home. Like, why you can't think of no t shirt song? I'm gonna go home and listen to that song. <laughs> All right, so the topic of today is the new black family structure. Um, I think that's a very important topic to talk about because there's so much going on. So many people got different views of how they feel about this. So, my question would be should um, women date like men? With who? Should women date like men? Date like men as far as what? So like as far as Nicki Minaj and her baby daddy. As far as like the woman being the breadwinner and she's picking a guy like how the guy picks the girls. You get what I'm saying? Um, I think women should date however the fuck they want. Okay? However you want to do it, honey. But I'm going I'm to go on here and piggyback off one of y'all. So I'm going to y'all Um... Like basically you're saying women dating as if like they're picking and choosing whom they want to be with. They're not waiting to get picked or chosen by a man. Like that's what you mean? So uh, if I'm dating like a like, man, yeah, I'm going so out you, here and I'm choosing. Like I know you, I'm, yeah, I'm picking between these five. So ideally, the, yeah. ideally the gender roles are switching. So the the mom is the the woman is the breadwinner. She going out here choosing. She the one with the pick up lines and she grabbing like that. Ooh, I don't know if I could be like that, though. <laughs> I'm kind of shy. You got to, like, look at me to know no, you looking like at me first. I like to be submissive, though. Like, so my opinion on that, like, when it comes to that type of stuff, I would feel like my submissive ways would kind of be, like, toned out because I feel like I'm put in a man position, like, in a man's shoes. Like, I would kind of lose respect for you and your masculinity at a certain point. So, no, like, I don't. I believe in the old-fashioned way of a family function, family structure, which is the man is the breadwinner. I, w- I want to say a woman should work if she wants to. If she just so happens to make more than a man, then, oh, it's complicated. It's complicated. It's complicated. Because in all reality, it's like, that's what's really... When it comes to, if we going back tax bracket, we're not going to say the, the 80000 a year and up. Right. But if we going lower tax bracket, like, it's this stereotype of women being a breadwinner and they going to pick the men, or the ones that are the breadwinner want the men that's 100000 and then they leave the men who make about forty, thirty, fifty thousand 50000 a year away. Like, they don't want them. I do want to say one thing, too, though. And that's kind of a different topic. When you're looking at that, too, like, you got to think about the men with the money. Why women who are more successful than their partner, I feel like the men with the money don't, like, they don't like, like, they don't like them. Like, they don't want to be with them type Mm. of stuff. Like, where they treat them, maybe, because, you know, they different. Men different when they got money versus when a woman got money. Like, a man, like, he'll, because, you know, that... You can buy a female back, her love and affection back with like a gift or something if you're a man with money. So you don't really care too much about like the little things, like treating her a certain way and stuff like that. So I feel like a woman with money is going to go is gonna go for sure after a man with the less amount of money than her because it, I, get what you're saying. Saying, I feel like he would treat her better though. <sighs> like I, 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 it's I feel like, like it's different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Like it's some women out there who you know have their own money and they just want a man for you know company. You know they don't want a man telling them what to do or you know bossing them around. I hate to say it Controlling. like that, but like yeah, like maybe they just want you there with them to help them cook and clean up or That's you know what whatever. Like it's different people and it's some women. Who are just like damsel in distress, like they can't live without a man telling them what to do and how to be and how to wear their hair and you know wear their clothes. So, but then, so what's what's really common with the new black family structure? Then, like, what are we seeing now? I mean, I would say definitely more women working, and like I feel like the new the new kind of structure is like kids being with family or in daycare because mom and dad are working and grandma probably working too and. Kids not really always, depending on the type of family you have, some people do still have grandparents at home, but like the new structure is everybody at work and kids is kind of like, I forget the word for it, but it's a word, it's a word used when basically kids like come home from school and they either like getting babysat by somebody else or they like in some type of after school program um, and they nobody, no family's ever really with them like because everybody's out working and making money. Mm-hmm. That's, that's definitely the structure of the family nowadays because... 
Yeah, I can't. Well, it's working now. Like, <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, it's every, everybody got to work and make their money, you know. But you know, who really home with the kids? Like five days out the week at least, you know. If we all in school or working or you know doing stuff. Yeah, I kind of feel like yeah, it's it's half and half. We get what we see on the internet more. It's either like. It's either like the man is like the huge breadwinner, and then they got they little woman who they've been with since 15. There's those out there too, and then they got the men who breadwinners that they probably messing with a woman that's about the same breadwinner as them. They might still make more money than the woman, but she is a breadwinner as well. Um, and then you got the women, and I feel like it's other factors that play into this, but then you have the women who are the breadwinner who mess with men that makes less than them for whatever, I, for, I think it's a control sure. thing. I think it's a control thing when women do that. It's different with men, because I feel like when men, <clears throat> ooh, especially when these women that be 40 years old and be talking to these guys that's like 20, 23, 25 like that that's definitely a control thing like out of all the people you could talk to you want to talk to this little boy and you want she's him trying to be to... trying to get her groove back y'all see no, that movie? no she no like... no no it's a it's a control thing like that remind me of like some pedophile stuff like y'all can argue with me if you want but it's just like you 40 years old and you messing with a 25 year old four years old 40 I was gonna say, girl. No, you forty years old and you messing with a twenty-five year old or a twenty-three year old. Like, come a on, woman? a woman. And it's I feel like it's different when a man do it because when men and I'm not trying to man, do no you double know what I'm standard thing. Nine. If I'm forty, I'm nine times out of ten. Excuse me for the people <laughs> oh in the back. My if I'm know. forty years old and you're twenty-six, That's come find me. <laughs> no. You said you I wonder what I would be doing when I'm 40. <laughs> no. So it's I okay mean, for men to date younger, but this, it's not okay this for is women my to date explanation. younger? No. When women date younger, it's an emotional men thing. Men do it too. Listen, though. but men it's a do different. do it like that too, though. It's a different aspect. This is my opinion. I feel like when men date younger, it's more of a visual, physical appearance thing. The man of them, they'll want to put you on and make sure you got your own stuff. When a woman dates younger, she wants full control. She basically going to take care of you like Speaking her from son experience. and y'all having sex. Speaking from experience. No. I don't right. like older men. Right. But I'm You're speaking, speaking from what I see. I'm speaking, speaking from what I see. I haven't I'm, seen like for me, if I I'm speak from my perspective as a and woman. And I have talked to an older 40, guy, but I just I'm like gonna date a, a younger young man and it's gonna be because he cute. Or you know, something I gotta be attracted to. Like, I'm sorry, I'm a visual creature too. So You might be married, have you have your I, mean, I, I can marry like a 26 people year old. People get them ages like I, I don't know. To. They be doing stuff like for the thrill. I would be a cool like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it may not be any emotion or any control, and it may do be, but like when you 40 and 50 and stuff, and you don't went through your 20s and 30s, and you don't got nobody, and you raised your kids and your grandkids mm -hmm. kind of grown, like you know, you just trying I'm to live your life. Right, get you some little, some little. It, to you me, I don't feel like it place. would be even like an emotional thing. Like I feel like you old enough at that age to know already, like what you want. If you're gonna I'm go after saying, this 26 year old, they can know what they want, it's but it's coming. Women is coming from an emotional place. It's not coming from. Oh, when you sit there and you mess with a 25 year old and you take care of them, you get them a car, you get them money, you put clothes on them, Erica you got them living on you, that's coming from an emotional place. I like that's Erica more than <laughs> Erica Badu. I fuck with her. <laughs> she get her she, man allowance. She can be my cougar. She How does. old is her man? He in his 20s. Or early 30s. Erica Badu. That's if you get three this, baby I mean, mama's <clears throat> <Yeah. laughs> Erica Badu, I like cougars too. Let it go. You heard me. <laughs> I like cougars too for the second time. I mean the third time. Okay. Point. She gonna see this. It's okay. Okay. So now this is the next topic. So we will talk about like a single parent dating a man with double standards. How y'all feel about that? And what I mean is like the woman is single. She uh -huh. used to be in a man. She's the man and woman of the house. And then she meet a man that has a double standard. Like he feel like he feel like that his woman shouldn't do anything, and this is dating. This is dating wise. 
and but she still has to take care of her home as the head of household like they're constantly clashing because he feel like you know that y'all yeah, get what i'm saying yeah like so. you should go with whoever you like fits you in that way because like if you're a man with a double standard and a woman that's so used to being you know mother and father there is going to be some type of conflict there because she's going to be so used to you know like being superwoman super mom doing this and everything for herself so when a man come in and be like oh baby i don't want you to work no more she's gonna be looking like well what would like yeah i'm a mother and stuff like that but i offer more than being a mom like for me specifically i'm not gonna stop working if you come and tell me that you want to support me and you want me to be a stay-at-home mother no yeah. i will work on my stuff personally like i will have more free time to work on what i want to work on but i'm never going to stop working and doing this like following my dreams and doing the things that i love because first and foremost i have a child and second i have a man that don't want me to work so yeah there's definitely going to be an issue there in that relationship nine times out of ten it won't work out I would say it has the ability to work out because, you know, for it's like for women, like if you come from a situation to where like someone was taking care of you and then things got bad and then you had to become independent and now you have this new man in your life like, oh, you shouldn't have to do this. You shouldn't have to do that. It's like if they're not relieving you of those masculine responsibilities then I don't really think they should be telling you, you know, to kind of get rid of them or put them on the back burner. What because, like, for example, like, if a man's telling you, you know, oh, I'll pay your bills or I'll pay your rent or do this and do that, but he not actually doing it, you know, he's saying you shouldn't have to pay this, you shouldn't have to do this, but, okay, who's going to do it if I don't? Like, if they're not relieving you of that, then, you know, you can't really, you don't, they're not giving you anything to work with to change your ways. Like, also you know? think about this part, Sharita. Okay, yeah, that's cool. We're going to pay my bills. We're going to pay my rent, all this, that, and the third. I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm not going to work no more. And what if you stop one day, decide you come home, you don't want to be with me no more? That would be sitting high and dry looking stupid, broke as hell. I agree. Depending on you, and you left me. Like, no, there's no way in hell I'm going to stop making money and supporting. Like, okay, yeah, you can relieve me of certain duties, but I feel like if you respected me as a woman and as a mother, you wouldn't even ask me to do that. Like, you wouldn't even be like, oh, yeah, I want to pay all your bills. Like, you know, I feel like if you respected me and you knew me, you wouldn't, ask, like, you wouldn't even ask me to do nothing like that because nine times out of ten, you know that I'm going to know that. We probably not gonna be together forever. I'm not gonna sit here and act like we finna be together forever. Even if we get married, we can still get a divorce, and you can still leave me with nothing. That's a negative mindset, though. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, I mean, you gotta be, saying, you like, gotta be open to all possible. If it's I mean, some all type possible of potential, things, like, if it's some type of potential, y'all gonna have to like work with each other on different things. Like you know, just because he's a man saying, okay, I want my woman to be this way, and, and you know, the woman is currently a certain way. Like you know, if he love her, he gonna be like, break up, and you don't. And you're not working because of him. Well, we're, I'm not what thinking that far. Because I, I am though. Saying, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to be real here. I'm not thinking about fairy tale. You know, this is not but. fairy tale. This is not Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Because y'all see what happened on Fresh Prince. She went back to work, and she resented him for telling her, like, yeah, I'll be the. You don't got to work. She came back years and years later after the kids grew up. And she resented him for telling her that. Like, yeah. And then he was like, you know what? It ain't like you refused it. So now it's kind of like this conflict in their marriage now because, damn, you resent me for, for, for making you a stay-at-home mother and making sure that But it's, were straight. But it really is some good men out there yeah. that really do have good you intentions. Think about all possible outcomes. It's no Right, I'm not telling nobody to quit their job. Like That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, I feel though. like the same thing. I feel like the safe thing is you should have your woman work period whether she working for herself or working for another company you should have her work because a stable marriage to me you never know what could happen your spouse could die and then if you was the bread one i i hear now to this day that it's some women they husband did everything for them and they don't even know how to drive they husband gone and they don't even know how to drive yeah, like, or he could die the, yeah he, he could die life insurance anything. boom now what you gonna do life insurance oh, okay but I'm saying like it's if you'd still have been a beneficiary. But even if you his wife forget the money, the, not forget the money, but it's still like little stuff like you don't know how to drive, you don't know how to count your finances. You you're you're a single mother now. Don't nobody care if you divorce. Unfortunately, it don't matter that you got married. You in a single mother club now. Yep. 
So then you need to work. As a woman, you have to work. And as a man, they need as a man, they need to be more accommodating to this is what type of society we living in. You is yeah, not yeah. Superman. You're gonna pass one day. We yeah. can forget that forget that forget the leaving option. You can die one yeah. day. And then if you didn't Man, teach her, me, you better not tell me. Let me go first. I'm sad thinking about it. I don't even got no boyfriend that's gonna die like it. So I'm sad thinking about it. Girl, but I, it's it's just in all reality, like I think that's what we come to the realization, especially black people and black women always been working since history, whatever. Black people been married, but black women always been working. Like you cannot have you doing your woman a disservice by having her sit at home and not do nothing but take care of the kids yeah. like i'm sorry she got to do something she got to be a count or something for your business like she got to do something if you want your kids to be straight um sure, daycare <clears throat> do something right do something something something, something. sell smoothies <laughs> okay <laughs> dang it was something else that popped up in my head okay so then the last topic is um Okay, we're going to talk about the street men real quick, real quick, real quick. So, um, so you're dealing with a black man. This is the scenario. You're dealing with a black man who didn't have his father in his life, so he forced to be on the streets and get male representation from other black men on the streets. Um, he expects for you to take care of him and make up for his mom, right? But he know how to bring money home. You know how to bring money home, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But you just got to fill in that gap of being like his mother and then him having other men that have raised him. So how y'all feel about that? Because that's been a common thing in the black family a lot. Like, a lot of men, a lot of black men are not the top 1%. So we do have to deal with the black men that either has the regular job or go to work or he's in the streets making money and got issues. I'm trying to think, cause I, don't know. I was just say therapy. Um, I used to like, you know, not agree with therapy and putting a professional in your business. But now, um, when you got real life problems and you like have a traumatic upbringing, and if anything traumatic has happened to you, therapy, 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 you it helps. Money, you can definitely go to therapy. You say you know how to bring home money, right? That's yeah. all I heard. I'm sorry. Therapy, <laughs> the money part. So with that being said, yeah, baby, we could pay for you some therapy. Go find your mama if you want to. What you want to do? You know? Or your daddy. Y'all so nice. You, that's the nice You can. Yeah, you know, baby. <laughs> no, I mean, real. I ain't going to judge you because your daddy experience. went there. It ain't your fault. You can't, you you can't fix nobody like childhood traumas or like yeah. no hole in their heart. Like you can love them with all your heart and you could be a good person and be that for them. But like you can't feel up anything else that's missing in them. And like, you can't dismiss the fact that they have those traumas right. as well because like we was talking about last week it'll become a trauma bomb yeah so yeah you can't dismiss that stuff at all you gotta you gotta roll with the punches if it's like that and if you really love that person therapy it works therapy for sure that was a very good answer now we know now we know know it's a hard time for black (laughs) men to go to therapy years to get to that therapy it's a hard time for black men to go to therapy now so i feel like my dad's going to therapy right now but i I think the more more people that do it and have positive experiences and share it with other people also got to find the right therapist that too it it may take you getting through to two to three people like oh i don't like her i don't like him oh yeah this the one like you know and you know like yeah she can deal with this crazy stuff (laughs) i'm telling her Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm speaking out loud. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for watching the L Podcast. Oh, we got these masks, y'all. The L Podcast mask. Check us out. We finna start Put with dick the in the bag. <laughs> Why don't I get hurt? We finna start. <laughs> Make sure y'all tune in. Make sure okay. y'all, yeah, when okay. we get the merch stuff up. You got it upside down, girl. Oh, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I like they the, got the, the bad <laughs> Period. I love it. Yeah. So we going to get started. Just make sure y'all stay tuned in. Make sure y'all stay informed. Make sure y'all keep up on everything. Um, We do got some features coming up, too. But we're going to keep that silent. But all right. So thank you for watching the L Podcast. Make sure y'all have a good, good day. And see y'all next week. Bye. 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 Bye.